Hey guys, Dan here with Device Enforcer and today we're going to be building a display piece for some RGB fans that you see on the wall behind me. Enjoy the video. So hopefully what you just saw actually looked pretty decent, but I wouldn't know because I haven't built it yet. I just have the idea and a few of the materials. So, so far, here are my thoughts. You may recognize these fans if you've been to the channel before. These are the Deep Cool RF120s. And I guess as you can tell by the fact that I'm holding one and they're not in the computer over there, I'm no longer using them in my main system. But that doesn't mean that I don't like the design or want to keep them around in a way that I can like appreciate the RGB. So that's the whole idea behind what we're doing today. I want to create some sort of wall art out of these fans where the RGB can still be powered. And right now I'm not too sure how I'm going to be doing that yet, but hopefully we'll figure that out as we go. Welcome to my floor where I have a preliminary layout of sort of how I think this is going to have to go together. So you'll see I have six of these RF120 fans. And using the original motherboard sync cable that they came with, I've hooked them up to an RGB control box. And now mine came with an RGB strip that I used to use, but now no longer have any use for. So I had these laying around spare, but I'll put a link in the description to where you can buy one of these control boxes and the power supply that goes with it if you're attempting to replicate this at home. So off the frame to the left there, it's just plugged into the wall. So theoretically this should allow me to yeah, turn the fans on, adjust the colors, and this is all just plugged into the wall. There's no computer controlling these LEDs anymore. So the one thing that I think I may have to get that I don't currently have is a 12 volt cable 12 volt power cable extension that's a color other than the black because I think that they make like flat white ones for security cameras and that will be much more hidden going up along the wall than that black cable so I'll also put a link to that in the description if I do end up finding one. You may notice I've got all this sitting on an Elmer's trifold display board like one of those foam trifold boards that are used for science fairs and this is what I'm going to use as the background sort of that everything gets mounted to just because I don't have the tools to work with something like plywood or like a plastic sheet of acrylic or something like that but I'm sure either of those would be a better product I'm just going with the cheap route that doesn't require me to buy additional tools at the moment so why don't I get this a little bit more laid out and try and do up some of the wiring and then I will be back with you to see how it turned out. Alright, I just finished mounting the fans to the board and I'm going to show you how I did that from the back here. So if we just flip it over, you'll see that what I've done is for each fan I've cut a little hole that's just big enough to pass the RGB connector through because the the fan header which also gets passed through is significantly smaller than the RGB header and then on the back I had laid out the position of each fan and then I used an exacto knife to punch the holes through the board to get the fan screws in so overall it wasn't really that difficult of a process. It was just kind of time consuming to get everything in the right spot and laid out how I wanted it. If I was going to do this again, I'd say that it would probably be better to use washers instead of just the fan screws because there are some places like this where you can see the screw kind of got pulled into the board as I was tightening it. So definitely look into washers if you're going to be doing this. But for my purposes, now that they're all mounted, I don't think they're going anywhere even without the washers. And this should be good enough to keep them on the board once I hang it on the wall. So all I have to do is hook up the rest of this wiring and we should be good to test it out and see if the RGB looks any good. Okay, so I'm back. And I don't know if you can tell from the difference in light, but it's night now. So this did take me... A 
pretty long time, but I think it's worth it. Obviously, I've still got a lot to do with the cables in the back here. So I'd like to build a frame around the outside out of a darker material. Like I might get two by fours and paint them black and cut like a notch in them to go around the foam board. But so far it looks like it's gonna work and you can change the color. Looks pretty good, I think. So I'll be back when I've decided what I want to do with the frame. Oh my gosh, the continuity is gone. It's a different day, so I'm wearing a different shirt. But the good news is I think that I have enough stuff to build the frames now. And I'll show you what my plan is right here. So I got these boards, which are one by four by six feet long. I got two of them. And I'm hoping to build the frame out of this. I'm hoping since it's not as thick as a two by four, it won't be as heavy, which should help me with mounting it on the wall. I know I said before that I didn't really want to buy any power tools for this, but I think I'm going to have to with the method that I came up with. So I went out and I got this, which is a Harbor Freight fixed end router. So hopefully this will allow me to cut a groove in those pieces of wood that I can use to like retain the board that has the fans on it. So never used one of these before, so that should be interesting. I got this saw from Harbor Freight to cut the wood because I didn't really have a method to do that before. I got a pack of one and a quarter inch wood screws from Home Depot to hold the whole thing together can of black paint to paint it and make it match with the rest of the room. I did end up finding some white extension cables for the 12 volt power from the power adapter, so this probably will blend in better with the wall than just having like a black cable running directly up the wall behind me. And that also came with these little nail clips that you can use to keep it flat against the wall, so that's pretty nice. And of course, since we're going to be working with power tools, safety glasses. Welcome back. It's the next day again, and I made some progress on the frame last night, but unfortunately I wasn't able to really record any of it because of the poor lighting and audio qualities of the basement where I was working. I can't exactly do it up here because it'll get sawdust everywhere, but I can't explain how I made the pieces of the frame. So here we have one of the pieces of the frame. So the first thing that I did was I took the piece of wood that I showed you in the last little segment, and I routed out this groove through the whole thing. And that's what the the foam board is going to slot into this groove so that it can't move forward or backwards. And then I used that miter box that I showed you to cut the edges off to 45 degree angles because that'll allow us to form the full rectangle out of these pieces. And then the next thing I did was I drilled holes where I wanted the screws to go, made sure they all went together. And then finally, I just painted it black. So you didn't really miss a whole lot, but now we have all four pieces of the frame so we can continue with the rest of the project. All right guys, welcome back again. And you'll see that I have the frame put together. I did this last night, but I noticed that some of the paint was a little bit tacky. So I put off finishing off the project until today. So that should hopefully be the last cut between days that we do. So you'll see that the front is pretty much done. So now what we're gonna be doing today is finishing up the back, doing all the wiring, and then mounting it on a wall. So I just finished up the wiring, so I'll show you a little bit of what I did. I kind of cable managed all the loose cables from before into like one line across the bottom just to make it easier to work with when I'm trying to hang it on the wall. And then over here you can see that the receiver and power cord are going to have to hang down off the edge of the frame so that you can get the signal to it and obviously power. And then what I did so that those wires wouldn't be like pushing it off from the wall is that I added these little fabric spacers, I'm not sure if you can see them, to keep it off the wall so that it doesn't damage the wall and allow clearance for those two cables. So my plan for mounting this on the wall is just to put two nails into the studs at an angle and then the top edge of this frame is just going to rest on them. So that should allow me to then shift it back and forth if I ever decide to move my desk slightly or take it down easily if I need to access the wiring in the back. But I'll go ahead and get this hung up on the wall and then come back to you and show you the finished result. 
So, as I guess you can tell, it's finished. I've got it hanging up on the wall now, and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Right now it's set to just cycle through rainbow colors to show all the different colors it can do, I guess. But, in the future, I'm planning on having it match to like a specific color that would accentuate the setup and match with the rest of the lights. So, expect to see that in future videos. I'll try to link the materials and tools that I used to build this down in the comments below in case you're trying to follow along at home. But apart from that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing because I'm planning on making a decent amount more content this year than I have in the past. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.